Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Arc Studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create some type of photorealism renders in Enscape very simple and easy. Imagine we have these people and asset in here, but we don't know how we can create some type of artistic render about it. So, I'm going to show you how we can do this show very simple and easy. So, I have three type of cameras in here I created before this tutorial. So I'm going to select one of them that called shot close in here. So something like that is about my camera. So don't worry about the distance between your camera shot and your targets. It's not really important right now. So I'm going to click on the uh, view and visual setting in here. So I want to reduce the field of view as I can to see what happened to this shot. As you can see, we have this type of detail about our 3D render and 3D assets. So I try to hold it with some low number about 16, something like that, or maybe 12 can be really good for this job. So I'm going to close it in here and minimize the endscape in here. So in the SketchUp environment, I want to use this light for my overall effect, something like that in here. And I need another light, I see maybe in the background. So I'm going to copy this light to the background someplace, maybe like that. As you can see, I can move it to see the dimension of it in my 3D rendering engine. Something like that is really good. So now time for the uh, rendering. So till now, if this video is useful for you to how work with Enscape for SketchUp, please subscribe our YouTube channel. Thanks for your support. So I'm going to open the visual setting in here. I'm going to turn off the auto exposure and re-expose my screen manually. As you can see, you can see the change is very fast and easy and it's really wonderful. So I'm going to type 69% for it. And in the depth of field, I'm going to turn the depth of field on and turn off the autofocus so when I play with the focal point I can focus on this women in here as you can see some type of thing like that and it's about 7.58 meter so I want to focus on the woman's face but it's a little bit too blur for my render so I'm going to reduce the depth of field to 11 and now it's much better you can see the changes on your lighting area and it's really wonderful if I want to increase it, I can see some type of more blurness and buckets in my render. So for the depth of field, I'm going to type 17% and in the outline, we don't need any type of outline because it's the natural render. So rendering quality, I will turn it to the ultra, but right now I don't need it, so I will don't touch it. In the image bar, I turn off the auto contrast, but I can turn it on and saturation. When I increase the saturation, look at these women's clothes. It's a type of the blue or teal and the grass. As you can see, when I increase the saturation, all colors will be burned out and it's not really realistic. So try to remain it on some normal number like the 104 person. So color temperature is about 5,900 Kelvina. So I prefer to reduce it or increase it. All of them completely depends on you. But right now, I prefer to reduce it to the 5600 Kelvin. Lens blur and bloom option is really important. So when I increase the bloom, I can see some more side effects about this light on my faces, surfaces, walls and other type of things. So bloom is about 26% and the lens flare is some number about maybe 66 and you can see some type of graphical options in here but it's not really realistic totally so i prefer to reduce it as a decade number about 32 percent and bloom option is about 23 percent Vignate is not really important right now and chromatic is not really important so i'm going to click on the atmosphere but till now we learn how to manage our lights and camera views if you like this video, please subscribe our YouTube channel. So let's get to continue this tutorial. Some brightness is not really useful, but night sky brightness can be improved a little bit to see more side effects of it, about 124%. We don't have any type of special shadows in this ground, so I prefer to use some shadow sharpness about 44%. Artificial light brightness related to these self-illuminated lights 
but I can increase them a little bit, not too much, so be careful about it because we have some spotlights in here and it will overline or burn out your render. 131% is really good and ambient brightness is not really useful because we don't have any type of interior rendering. Fog is not really important and the uh, source about the HDRI is something like that. So everything is done for me in the output. I'm going to change my custom resolution to some type of nice and wonderful resolution. Maybe something like that can be really nice for my job and my shot. So I prefer to use some number about 1280 to the uh, 1920, something like that. And now it's much better. So I want to turn it to the PNG for more details on my 3D render, or I can increase this rendering quality as I can. So I try to use some type of special resolution. For example, 1600 to the uh, 2200, something like that, or 400, something like this. You can play with it. I think this quality is really wonderful for my job right now. Maybe it can be better, but I prefer to use this type of resolution. It's really wonderful. So in the main bar, I'm going to increase the rendering quality to the ultra mode. But before I do this job, I'm going to click on the asset library in my Enscape. Select this woman in here, click on the move option and move it a little bit on the red axis something like that and i'm going to orbit a little bit this guy something like this and apply changes as you can see now we have better shot about our target and it's really wonderful so in the exposure i prefer to use some more exposure about 70 percent and now i'm going to increase my rendering quality to the ultra as you can see the quality is really incredible so in the bloom option i'm going to turn it to the 19 and lens flare is some number about maybe 22 percent so everything is good in the main bar contrast is checked color temperature acceptable but i can adjust it a little bit atmosphere everything is good and i think time for the r rendering so everything is done and now I'm going to increase the uh, depth of field a little bit or decrease it to the 14%, something like that. And I think it's done. So in the uh, asset library, select this guy again and move it a little bit on the uh, blue gizmo and apply changes. So it's really wonderful and exactly what I want from this render. So in the depth of field, I want to see a little bit architectural elements like the uh, wall in the background so I can reduce the uh, depth of field to the 9% and now we have better texturizing in our rendering scene. So everything is good and time for the rendering so I'm going to click on the uh, screenshot button, change it on my desktop and details. So I'm going to type it for example photorealism and save it. As you can see, we create these type of renders very simple and easy only in a few minutes. Finally, I have some only words with you guys. My channel have some problem about the watch time in YouTube. So please subscribe and watch our videos till the end to support our job. So I really need your help guys. Thanks for your watching. Please subscribe our YouTube channel, like this video and share it with your dear friends. My subscribers is my valuable elements in my job and I really love them. All of the YouTube watchers who watch my videos and if you don't like this video, you can dislike it because it can be help me to improve myself, my abilities and my tutorial or teaching methods. So I'm really thankful for your watching. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your support, good luck and goodbye.